G'day, I'm Paul. So Nissan has some new SUVs coming to Australia this year. There's the Qashqai, the X-Trail and the Pathfinder as well. They're due to arrive later this year. We're gonna do a detailed review on them when they do arrive, but today is all about a high level overview to give you an idea of what's coming. We're not gonna be driving any of them today because we don't have pricing, we don't have exact specifications either, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you what is coming. Now, these are all their respective top specifications. So there's TI over here in the Qashqai, we have TIL in the X-Trail and then TI in the Pathfinder as well. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we do fun things like this. Now let's kick off with the Qashqai first. So I mentioned earlier on that this is the top specification. It's called the TI. The Qashqai has grown in every dimension and here in person, it actually looks like a much, much bigger vehicle. And I think that's a good thing. Buyers in this segment are wanting a little bit more room inside. This competes with things like the Kia Seltos, the Honda HRV, uh, the Mazda CX-30. So it's that kind of vehicle in terms of its size. And you can see with the design, they really have gone to town here with modernizing this and giving it a unique appearance. So up the top there, you've got this piano black strip, big Nissan logo there as well and then chrome highlights around the car too. I like the fact here with the top spec, it's got a black roof on it as well, so it really does stand out nicely, and I think this will look good in traffic too, especially with some of the LED light treatments that I'll run you through in a second. Now, let's talk about engines, because you've got two to choose from. The first is a four-cylinder turbocharged petrol. Now that's exciting because a lot of the vehicles in this segment are naturally aspirated, especially at that entry level. It'll send torque through a CVT, which is a continuously variable transmission, and the entire Qashqai range is front-wheel drive only. But then it steps up to this. This is Nissan's e-power engine. It's a little bit unique as well because this actually acts as a generator for a battery system. The battery system then drives the wheels. So there are some great economies there, and this is pretty advanced technology, especially in an SUV this size, it's gonna mean that it is very economical and I'm looking forward to actually testing it out and seeing exactly what that feels like. The Qashqai in general will be available in four specifications. So there'll be a little bit of something there for everyone to choose from. Down here, you've got a set of LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. I like this detail too. You've got Qashqai written on that little um, headlight cover just there. You've got a vent that runs down the side here that's actually pops out just over here behind the tire, which I think is pretty cool. It's on a fake vent. It's actually functional and doing something, which is good. Around here, you've got a set of 19 inch alloy wheels. I like this design. So you've got machined on the outside and like a graphite finish on the inside there. Above those wheel arches, you have these wheel arch protectors. Keep in mind the whole range is front wheel drive. So you're not gonna be doing any off-roading or anything like that. Down here, you've got an e-power badge to signify that this is the hybrid version of this car. Up the top here, black on that wing mirror with an indicator built into there and camera as well. This is what I was talking about with the roof. So it comes, you know, body colored down here, but then goes to black up the top there. And then you have a glass roof as well. I think this design looks great. And obviously we don't know pricing yet, but it does look really nice and premium. So if they do decide to jack the price up a little bit, it's gonna at least look like it deserves that price tag. You've got these roof rails up the top here as well. And more of that chrome finish down the side of the car privacy glass and then whip around to the back. Now around the back here, you've got a set of LED, mind the race car, Sean. <laughs> you've got a set of LED tail lights as well. A shark fin aerial up the top and there's boot lip spoiler here with the brake light built into it. I really like the design of the rear of this as well. They've tidied it up nicely. It goes from a body color up the top there to this black finish below and then a sort of darker gray finish beneath that as well. Qashqai written along that boot lid too. And then another e-power badge, just so you don't forget. So let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the design here? Do you think it actually looks good? Do you think they've done this justice? And do you think it's big enough or would you like to see this slightly bigger? Let me know down there. So we're inside the Qashqai. Look at this, this is a massive step forward from the previous generation. In fact, it's not even a step forward, it is like in another sort of country or planet altogether. Um, so looking at the dashboard, you've got all of this soft touch material along the top there. I like this as well. It's, it's not sort of like a typical piano black. It's got this textured material on it. That runs along the dashboard, also this center section and then uh, also a little bit on the doors there as well. In addition to these soft touch materials, you'll notice that the color of this is slightly different. It's like a navy blue. 
and it sort of offsets nicely with the black there and tucked into there is LED ambient lighting. So really impressive looking setup. But I think the thing that probably impresses me the most is this infotainment system and how big that is across the top there. I'll run you through that in just a second. But for the most part, this all looks really nice. Now these are pre-production cars, so I'm not gonna run our durometer or our uh, build quality test here, but all of these materials are soft to the touch and it feels like a really comfy place to be seated. Let's talk about infotainment and just technology in general inside the cabin here. This is probably the thing that has me most excited because that is a whopper screen for a car in this segment. So it's a 12.3 inch display. Ahead of the driver is another big display. And then you also have a 10.8 inch head up display as well. So this display up here is driven by shortcut buttons beneath it or as a touch screen. It also has inbuilt satellite navigation. You've got things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And in addition to that, all the sound is plumbed through a 10 speed a Bose branded sound system, which I think is pretty impressive. Head of the driver is another display that gives you all of your critical information, trip computer, etc. And then the same story on the head up display that basically gives you all of the information you need to, to know about while you are driving the car. Now, moving on to safety, this actually covers all of the cars here. Nissan's kind of just loaded them full of safety tech. And while safety features might slightly differ between the cars, the gist of it is they have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You have a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. You have a sort of semi-autonomous steering function that operates through what they call Pro Pilot. Blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirrors, uh, rear cross traffic alert and that kind of thing. Depending on the grade as well, you'll also get a three. 60 camera. I'm not going to go through those in detail right now just because they will vary between the cars. We'll test those out when we actually drive these cars to get a proper idea of exactly what it's like outside in real world conditions. Now what about your practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you have wireless phone charging down here which is great. You've got a 12 volt outlet. USB-C here in the center console with a USB-A port as well. And then on your storage you put your phone kind of anywhere that you want, but you've got bottle storage here in the center, storage inside the doors as well. And let's look at our glove box. So plenty of places to put your things. And what about your comfort? You've got dual zone automatic climate control. You've got seat heating here for the front row. You have heated steering wheel. These seats are great because they've got this diamond quilted finish on them. In addition to that, they also both have massage. So both of these seats will massage you. They have electric seat adjustment and memory for the driver as well. So this is pretty loaded when you consider this is kind of their entry level uh, SUV after the Duke, but I mean, it comes with virtually everything, which is really impressive. Now, before we jump to the back, I want to run you through this cool feature. So not only can you drive the ePower version of Qashqai in EV mode, but you can also use e-pedal. Now, e-pedal is, I guess, Nissan's version of single pedal driving, and it's fairly common in EVs, but it's not something we really see in hybrids. In fact, I can't even think of a hybrid that has it. But when you do engage that, you're able to come to a complete stop without using the brake pedal. So it's innovation like that that's really gonna help this segment along and, and make the transition from uh, petrol to hybrid to EV all the more easier. Okay, second row of the Qashqai. Let's talk about room first. So not exactly a massive amount of room. My knees are kind of in the seat there in front of me. This is pretty far back, but it is a little bit cramped. Toe room is good. Headroom isn't too bad. Love this big glass roof. That looks fantastic. Very impressive. Um, seats, so they have that same diamond quilted finish here in the back. In terms of creature comforts, you have map pockets, air vents, which is good news for those hot summer days, USB-A port, USB-C port, and a center armrest with two cup holders, storage inside the doors as well. You've got Isofix on the two outboard seats with three top tether points as well. But look, overall, it feels really nice back here, especially with all of these finishes. It feels just as nice back here as it does up the front there in terms of the fit and finish. Now, before I show you the boot, have a look at this. That door aperture is almost 90 degrees, so it means getting our baby seats and kids in and out is going to be a much easier task. Now, cargo space, you've got a power tailgate and that exposes you to a reasonably sized boot, but it does get bigger because under here, you've actually got more storage before you venture into the depths of the underbelly of this. It means you can basically hide valuables there and no one can see them from the outside. 
There's also a section up the front there as well. In addition to that, you've got storage off to the sides here, plus a 12 volt outlet up the top. You can also then drop the second row, which expands that space even further and gives you virtually a flat load floor. So X-Trail time, this is likely to be one of the big volume sellers here at Nissan. I've got to say it's a big departure from the previous generation of X-Trail in terms of design. Again, very daring here in all of the design elements and I think it pays off. It actually looks really nice here in person. It looks bigger in person as well. It's weird, the X-Trail was never a small looking SUV but this actually looks a whole lot fuller in the cheeks. If you get what I mean. Um, down here you've got another big grille with closed off sections up the top there. Chrome elements around the outside of that. This is a bit of a company face because it kind of follows the same theme on the rest of these SUVs here as well. So uh, I think it actually looks good, especially with this color. It's like a, um, it's like a Nissan's version of Nardo Grey. It looks fantastic. I think this is actually offered on the uh, Navara Pro 4X as well, which I think um, is really cool. Um, down the bottom here, you've got some more chrome elements offsetting that body color. Now, let's talk about the engine. We'll crack this open. This is the same engine that they use in the new Outlander, which means it's a two and a half litre four cylinder naturally aspirated petrol engine. It's mated to a CVT, and in this particular specification, it has an on demand four wheel drive system. We didn't really love this engine in the Outlander because it just felt a little bit underpowered, especially when you consider the Qashqai with the e-power actually makes more torque than this. So this is a much bigger car. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Maybe the tune here is a little bit different to the Outlander, but um, only time will tell. In addition to that, you have a 2000 kilogram braked towing capacity. And on the X-Trail lineup, there's gonna be four specifications to choose from. Pop this back down. So in terms of headlights, you have adaptive LED headlights. So the main beam is down the bottom here and then up the top you have the LED daytime running light. There's also a vent down here that pops out just next to those tires as well. Whip around to the side. Down here you've got a set of 19 inch alloy wheels. Machine finish on the outside and then a darker finish on the inside. A Little bit of wheel arch cladding just in case you ever want to do a bit of light off-roading. Oh, by the way, we actually shot an off-road comparison with all the medium SUVs in this segment. Probably gonna have to redo it now that this is out. You can click up here to watch that. See what you think about how far these actually can go. Up the top here, you've got some black color there on the wing mirror with an indicator built in, camera on the side there for the 360 camera. So like the Qashqai, this also has option of a black roof on this specification. Love this design, it really just offsets beautifully with that color. Big moon roof there as well with your roof rails. Down the bottom there, more of that chrome. And as we step to the back, privacy glass, and then whip around to the back. Around the back, we have LED tail lights, X-Trail lettering along that tailgate, Nissan logo just there. Now, this is a plastic tailgate, which I think is pretty cool. So they've done that to save some weight. Shark fin aerial up the top, this boot lip spoiler with a brake light built into there. A little bit more chrome as well as you head further down that rear bumper. Now on boot space, we've got a powered tailgate here. We'll crack this open. So it's a reasonably sized boot as well. This has the two dividers similar to Qashqai, so you can lift that out of the way. Lets you store things under here without anybody being able to see them from the outside. You can also get a cargo blind that goes on there as well, plus storage off on the sides there. 12 volt outlet up the top. You can then drop the second row too if you do want a little bit more space. So that just folds out of the way and gives you a massive boot with a fairly flat load floor as well. So let me know what you reckon about the design here of the X-Trail. Do you think it is a big enough step forward from the previous generation? Let me know down there. So we're inside the X-Trail. Now you might be thinking to yourself, the Rogue, which is the US version of the X-Trail, has been out for ages. Well, ours is actually built in Japan and they've only just started production of the right-hand drive X-Trail out of Japan. So this is a very fresh new model and there are a few subtle differences between this and the US spec as well. But that also means a big step forward in terms of what you've seen here compared to the old X-Trail. So soft touch stuff along the dashboard there. I like the use of this material. So similar to the Qashqai, it's not wood grain. It's like a I don't know what that is, but um, it really is a good break from Piano Black, which some manufacturers are just using way too much of at the moment. And it is really nicely presented here, especially with all the big screens to look at. On your touch points, if you are doing a long distance drive, you've got your elbow resting on that and this door, it feels great. Steering wheel sits nicely in the hand and these sections on the side are soft to the touch as well. 
Let's talk infotainment. So very similar to Qashqai, you have a big 12.3 inch display here in the center. It's a touch screen. You've also got shortcut buttons. You have a screen ahead of the driver, 12.3 inch as well, and then a 10.8 inch head up display. So again, inbuilt satellite navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, plus a 10 speaker Bose branded sound system. So all very modern high tech equipment here when it comes to infotainment. Now on the safety front, you're getting everything that you get there in the Qashqai, but in addition to all of that, you have this up here, which is a digital rear view mirror. So that means you can use it just as a standard mirror or it moves to a digital rear view mirror. This is also mirrored in the Pathfinder as well, which also picks up that same technology. Now your practicality, and we'll start off with connectivity. So USB-C, USB-A, you've got a 12 volt outlet there as well. Wireless phone charging, which is good. Then on the storage front, you have plenty of storage there in the center for bottles, storage over here as well. You've got like a little business card holder or something over to the right hand side. You also have this center section that opens up like a butterfly with a little bit of room in there. You have a glove box down here. And finally, a sunglasses holder up the top. Finally, your comfort. So seats have Nappa leather on them, very fancy. You have electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger, plus memory as well for both of those seats. Dual zone automatic climate control with heated seats and a heated steering wheel as well. Steering wheel offers both tilt and reach adjustment and that is entirely manual. So just like Qashqai, huge door aperture there, which means getting kids in and out, getting baby seats in and out is very straightforward. And then in terms of room here for adults, heaps of knee room, Toe room's great, headroom's good too, like this big roof as well. Love the fact that in each of these models you can actually get a sunroof or glass roof of some description. Uh, creature comforts, map pockets, you've got air vents here, third zone of climate control, you have heated seats, and then a USB-C port, USB-A port, privacy blinds. Forgot to mention up the front there as well, you've got this different colored trim too, just to break things up a little bit. Storage inside the door there for a bottle. This center section folds down to reveal two cup holders. And in fact, this second row actually moves forward as well to give you more boot space if you need to with just a little bit of recline as well. So pretty impressed here with the second row of the X-Trail. Finally, the Pathfinder, this thing has I don't know, it's, it's grown as well, but I think it's grown and, and matured into this very handsome looking vehicle. So this is now a bit, bit of a, I guess, people mover and a uh, seven seater in this case, but can be an eight seater depending on which spec you go for. So it is actually pretty impressive there as being a versatile vehicle. On the design front, you can see that they've really transformed the styling from the sort of, um, I guess, dowdy old Pathfinder into this thing, which sort of has a bit more of a, a rugged look to it compared to the old one, which was more like a big, <laughs> big lounge chair. So big grill there, Nissan logo. You've got these sections up the top here, blanked out. Chrome follows that all the way down the front there and up the sides. And a camera there for the 360 camera radar down the bottom as well. So it is a really cool looking design. And I first spotted one of these in the States on a recent trip and it really stands out in traffic, especially around the back. And I'll show you that in just a second, but let's talk about the engine. So it's gonna be offered with just one engine, which is a naturally aspirated petrol V6. So it makes over 200 kilowatts of power. It now uses a nine speed automatic transmission. Gone is that CVT, thank goodness. A towing capacity of just under 3000 kilograms. And it also uses a on-demand four wheel drive system with a number of selectable drive modes as well. So it is a uh, decent engine there for that. I'll be interested to see what this feels like because this is a big vehicle. Naturally aspirated V6 is generally Really need a bit of motivation to get moving. We've seen that before in Kluger as an example, but um, keen to see what Nissan has put together here. Down here, you've got a set of adaptive LED headlights with that LED daytime running light signature up the top. And then as you come around to the side here, these are a big set of 20 inch alloy wheels. And I reckon it's a nice design there. You've got the machined finish on the outside and then a graphite finish on the inside there. Looking further above, you can see these wheel arch protectors because it is 
all-wheel drive, so you might go off-roading at some point there, you never know. Um, up the top here, you've got a black cover on that wing mirror with an indicator built into there, and then another camera there for the 360 camera. Now, similar to the other cars as well, you've got this black roof, and it offsets nicely there with the colour on this top spec model, and that follows on to here where you have a moonroof that opens as well. More of that chrome trim down the bottom there with Pathfinder on that back door. Privacy glass, some black roof rails, and then whip around to the rear. So this is what I'm talking about at the back. Doesn't it look prestige and premium? So you've got Pathfinder there in individual letters, Nissan logo with this piano black strip along the center, shark fin aerial up the top and this sort of uh, boot lip spoiler with a brake light integrated into there. Now the interesting thing here as well is the camera is actually up here. So if you do have an issue where you know, you're driving through rain or something like that, it's in the path of the wiper, which means that it's going to clear debris off that. You'll easily be able to see exactly what's going on. It also has a digital mirror as well. So all bases are covered there when it comes to looking out the back. See the camera there for the reverse view camera and then the digital mirror up the top there. Now down here, you've got the body color section and then this uh, sort of silver finish as you move further down. These guys haven't tried to put any fake exhaust pipes in or anything like that. It's all nicely concealed under the car there and I think it gives you a really nice appearance at the back of it. So let me know, comment section below, do you think that this will look good on Australian roads? I reckon it definitely will. Okay, so Pathfinder time. This is the one that you want if you have a big family or you've got a big family coming or you're ferrying a big family, whatever the case may be. Now this, depending on which spec you get, is either eight seat or seven seat. Here in the top specification, it's a seven seat and you've got captain's chairs in the middle. And there's a cool feature there as well, which I'll run through when we jump inside the back. In terms of the design though, it is again a big step forward from previous generation Pathfinder. It was getting so dated. This on the other hand is like a spaceship in comparison. So soft touch materials along the dashboard there, even along the sides here where you're resting your knee, it's gonna be comfortable for longer distance drives. This center section is nice and soft. I also love these little creature comforts like the gripped pad down here to store your devices while they're charging or you just wanna rest them somewhere. They really have gone to a fair bit of effort here. The material along the dashboard there is like a brushed aluminum style looking material. I think it's plastic, but it kind of looks nice the way they've set that up. And again, minimal use of piano black. It is around the sides here, but for the most part, they've kept it fairly realistic. So yeah, really like the way this is presented. Let's talk about infotainment. So while the other two had these giant infotainment systems, somehow you step backwards when you get to the Pathfinder, you have a nine inch infotainment system. If you've seen our review of the Mitsubishi Outlander, this is the same infotainment system that's featured in that. It's a good infotainment system. It's high resolution, very easy to use and very snappy as well. You've got shortcut buttons down the bottom and then also physical knobs so you can actually do things without having to press things on the screen and hope that whatever you pressed has actually done something. I have a feeling though that down the track this is probably going to get the same infotainment system as the Qashqai and the Xtra maybe as part of an update or something like that. But ahead of the driver, you do get this big 12.3 inch display. You also get the same 10.8 inch display for the head up system. So this from a technology standpoint is great. Audio comes in the form of a Bose branded sound system, AM, FM, DAB radio. You've also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it is a fully featured setup. Now, what about your practicality? We will start off with connectivity. You've got a wireless phone charger down the bottom here, 12 volt outlet, a USB-C, a USB-A. And then on storage, you have so much room to store things. You can slide a phone into here. You've got cup holders here, also inside the doors as well. The center console is a whopper too, plenty of room in there. Also got a glove box reasonably sized and Finally, a sunglasses holder up the top here. And then on the comfort front, you have dual zone automatic climate control. You have heated and cooled seats for the front row. Have a look at this though. I, I remember when we drove the Pathfinder last time, one of the things I loved the most about it was actually the seat comfort. It was like you were sitting on a big armchair. This feels no different. It's sort of hugging me in nicely. It's such a soft, big seat. Look at this, even fit bigger people as well, which is good news like me. And then in terms of adjusting these seats, you have electric adjustment for the driver and front passenger with seat memory for the driver too. Steering wheel offers both electronic adjustment for tilt and reach. It really is a nice place to be seated up the front here. 
Before we hop into the back, you do have some drive modes for that petrol V6. They're located down here, so you've got seven of them to choose from, plus a hill descent control as well. So second row of the Pathfinder, this is what I like. I'm an adult, obviously, uh, but I've got stacks of room here. Look at that, heaps of knee room, toe room's great. Headroom is good as well. Big old sunroof there as well to give you light inside the cabin. So I mentioned up the front there that this is a seven seater. So you've got two, two, three. In addition to that, you have the ability to remove this center section so that this can act as a pass through for the kids. So um, when that's gone, you can basically just walk through the middle there and it's very easy to remove. There is nowhere to store it inside the car, so you'll have to leave that at home, but it is easy to take out. I'll show you how these seats fold in just a second. But in terms of your other creature comforts, you have vents up here in the roof. You've also got controls here for a third zone of climate control with seat heating for the two outboard seats. USB-C charging, USB-A charging. Then you've got cup holders up the top here, storage down the bottom as well. Plus, look at this, some privacy blinds to keep everything private in the second row. Uh, so this is pretty impressive here in the second row. Let's jump into the third row and see if that is actually an adult friendly area. Okay, let's talk about third row. So I do love how much aperture you have here as well. It makes getting in and out very easy. Now this is cool because this seat can basically move out of the way in two different configurations. So first one, we can drop it down like that and you can, if you want, climb over. It's also handy for loading things in as well. But the most creative way to do it is just pushing this button here. Seat slides and moves forward like that. And then I can hop in the back. I'll put this down to see how much room we have. It is worth calling out at this point that this row actually moves forward. So Sean, I'll get you to just move the second row forward a touch there so I can show you how much room there is for adults here. There we go. So with that amount of room, I actually have stacks of knee room there. Toe room pretty cramped, but I can sort of side saddle if I want to. I've got USB charging over on the right hand side, uh, which is a USB-A port cup holders as well for both sides. Now it is worth pointing out here that you have three seats here, so you can fit three people across here. I don't know that it's adult size, but you could definitely fit kids. The other cool thing as well is that you have an ISO fix point on this third row. You have ISO fix on these two seats, but also top tether as well. So it means that you can actually fit an enormous amount of baby seats within the cabin too. I'm actually surprised how much room there is here for adults as well, plus air vents up the top. So yeah, it's not a bad place to be seated, even if you are an adult. Righto, let's talk about cargo space. Now, the good thing here is despite this being a three row SUV, you actually still have adequate storage here behind the third row. And then it gets even better under here as well because you can stick larger items beneath the cargo floor. It means you won't see them from the outside either, which is good news. And this can also clip into position so that it doesn't actually drop down on its own. So very clever technology. You've got a 12 volt point off to the side there, plus some hooks as well. Then what you can do to expand this space is drop these headrests out of the way and then fold the seats down as well. Look at that, and that gives you a massive boot to work with. So this is a bit of a, a sort of people mover and SUV all in one. So there you go, just to recap, we don't know pricing just yet. That'll be coming out soon, hopefully, so make sure you keep an eye on carexpert.com.au for the latest details there. But look, I'm genuinely pretty excited to be driving these because they represent a huge step forward for Nissan when it comes to the SUV space. Nissan also reckons these are going to be available, which means you won't have to wait a huge amount of time. So let's wait and see whether that materializes, but if it does, it's gonna mean that you have some really great products to choose from that are available in dealerships as well. Now, let me know in the comments section below, what do you reckon about this latest offering? Are you as impressed as I am with these? Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well. But until next time, take it easy.